This may look like the world's least popular water park, but it's actually New York City last night after a mundane summer rainstorm led to massive flooding across the region, affecting subways, commuter trains, and even the New Jersey Turnpike. More than two inches of rain fell on the area in less than one hour at one point, overwhelming the city's stormwater capacity. In just the past two weeks, we've also had destructive and deadly flooding like this in Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, Chicago, Iowa, Tampa, New Mexico, and of course, Texas. Floods aren't new, but their frequency and severity have gotten worse as the planet has gotten hotter. It's just physics. Hotter air can hold more water. So when rainstorms hit, they're wetter, dumping more rain all at once. Hundred and even thousand year floods become routine. They're even hitting places like Vermont, which were once considered safe havens from climate change. So aside from building a boat, what do we do about this? I've got some ideas to accompany all this horrifying footage. First, we have to stop burning fossil fuels as quickly as we can. The hotter the planet gets, the worse these storms will get. In the meantime, we have to be better prepared for the rain we're already getting. The tragedy in Texas exposed how some places aren't equipped to warn people about rising waters in time to save lives. At this point, every place it rains could be at risk of flooding, which is pretty much everywhere in the world. So people need to be aware of their personal flood risks and keep an eye on the weather, just in case their local authorities aren't able to warn them. And more people need to have flood insurance. Coverage right now is limited to a few people on coastlines. Homeowners without flood insurance in places like the North Carolina mountains and Texas Hill Country learned a hard lesson when their homes were washed away in an instant. The trouble is you can't always get flood insurance from private carriers. FEMA is also being downsized by the Trump administration, which is also cutting off climate resilience funding to states and towns. This is the opposite of what we need to be doing right now to survive this new era of flooding. Houses and offices need to be waterproofed, and so does our infrastructure. Many drainage systems were designed and built for a climate that no longer exists. They need to be upgraded to handle bigger water flows. And to do all this, we really need to unite across our political echo chambers. Everyone's getting flooded. While some states may figure this stuff out sooner than others, it would be much better if the federal government considered this issue a priority, no matter who wins the White House. Flash floods will always be terrifying, but there are things we can do to make sure they're not so dangerous and destructive.